Nigeria's petrol subsidy payment continues to bleed the economy after the government spends 1 trillion naira in 10 months. Also in the face of the pandemic and numerous other health challenges, we take a look at Nigeria's health sector and the need for development. As always, we will be looking through the papers and going through the major stories making headlines. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. I am Osao Gye Ogbon. And I am Messi Bobo. It's good to have you join us as always. We always will start with, um, you know, first of all, saying compliments of the season. And we hope that you're having a very, very interesting Christmas stroke New Year break. Uh, we, of course, are here to ensure that it goes as uh, peacefully and beautifully as possible. We start with top trending stories this morning. Just two of them. First of all, in uh, the United Kingdom, where a man, an Indian, has been arrested. I believe he's about 19 years old. His name, Jaswant Singh Chail, um, also known as Darth Jones, you know, as he called himself, was arrested, you know, after he attempted to assassinate the Queen of England. He had put out a, a message online on um, his uh, social media at about 8.06 a.m. on Christmas morning claiming that he was going to attempt to assassinate the Queen of England and, of course, uh, wishing his uh, friends and well-wishers farewell because he didn't think that he would survive the assassination attempt, uh, but he was going to go ahead and do it. Um, he then, of course, went ahead with his attempt and was arrested about 500 meters from the Queen's private residence. Um, he claims that he was doing it in revenge of a 1919 massacre of Indians uh, that, of course, led to the loss of about 300 to 1,500 um, Indian lives uh, just around the uh, First World War period. Uh, but he was arrested and, according to reports, was uh, sent to the mental health uh, sector. I think it says it was... Um, um, section on the, the Mental Health Act. Um, but that's, of course, in the UK, because if you try that here in Nigeria, you may not You're make any it very far. <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> There's people who, of course, have spent, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, many, many years in jail for simply, you know, criticizing the governor on Facebook, you know, talk less <laughs> and to talk of an assassination <laughs> attempt that you even record and put on, on um, I think, on Facebook. Mm. Um, so, yes, in the UK, you will eventually get, you know, checked for mental health, you know, challenges. You get a lawyer, you will be questioned, you know, and some of all of that. Um, but another thing that I will mention is, you know, is the fact that um, when certain things happen in history, um, you know, and, and, and governments and people expect that people would simply just move on. You know, they say, um, oh, this happened in 1967 during the Biafran War. Or this happened, you know, it was early 2000s, you know, and, um, you know, the government has apologized and some of all of that. Um, one thing that we should always remember is that not everybody moves on. Not everybody simply forgives and accepts that it's in the past, you know, and government made a mistake. And there's been so many of those incidents here in Nigeria, the 150 people who died in the Iran bombing, you know, when the Air Force, according to them, misfired. Uh, the uh, Shiites, you know, that were killed, according to government figures, 347. Some people say as much as 1,000 people were killed sometime in 2015 in Zaria. Uh, the, of course, OD killings, there's been so many, you know, of these examples that the Nigerian government, and, you know, not just in Nigeria, but I'm going to use Nigerian government as, a, as an example now, would, you know, assume that people would just forget and move on. And including the, um, um, you know, Lekki Toge. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's been a couple of all those things. But, you know, one thing that, you know, I'm trying to point out here is that this happened in 1919. But this 19-year-old still feels that he needs to avenge the death of those Indians that were killed even before his, probably his grandparents were born. He still needs, you know, he felt like he needed to do something about it. And um, these things exist and these persons still exist. There's still, I'm sure, you know, a couple of Shiites who are still very, very upset. And we do not know what, you know, if, if government doesn't actually, um, you know, take responsibility and punish whoever needs to be punished and do something, then yeah. we, you know, we might have in another 20 years, 30 years, you can never tell somebody who still feels angered by those killings. You know, like in the Biafra war, the Asaba killings, the Asaba massacres is properly called. There's many of them that you know, people still remember till date. You know, um, in, in this particular case, I mean, the first thing that, you know, came to, or that would come to mind would be the case of being a sociopath, you know, you know, there's a mental case. Now, but it's a good thing that that's a society where that would always want to check all of the excesses to find out, you know, what it is with that. But, I mean, the points that you've mentioned, very valid, and I agree with you on that, that uh, we can't constantly just, you know, move away and ignore things that 
you know, happen in our society. I mean, let's narrow it down to Nigeria, like you have, you know, put out all of that. And it constantly shows that, it, it, that's why, you know, recently a, a group of persons decided that there should be, the, the, the constitutional review should be suspended because it's insensitive where you have a lot of people agitating for self-determination and they say they want to go their way. This one is saying, I want to go away. I don't want to be part of this entity called Nigeria. Now, the most important thing would have been, you know, listen, pay attention. We can't constantly act like everything is okay. We are fine. The government is on top of the issue. I mean, uh, like you have mentioned. So it's important that we pay attention to, you know, all of these issues. I can only imagine uh, the history. I mean, it's like thinking about, um, I, I recently saw that, I think it's a long time ago, but I saw that, um, you know, talk where, what's her name again? Chimamanda Adeche, you know, she was talking and then a lot about what transpired, you know, the whole uh, Western domination of, you know, other parts of the world and all of the pains. So let's, let's even assume that I'm a young person, I'm growing up and then you constantly read all of those things, all of the maltreatment, all of the slavery and what have you. So yeah. it's always good to, I mean, restitution, peace, there can never be justice. We need to always pay attention as a government, as a people, you know, to the, these things because, I mean, and that's why you constantly have history. Uh, that's a young lad right there. But what, what, what do you have? And it also brings back to the fact that, I mean, if you look at our curriculum, I don't know if that's been restored. The fact that we're trying to take away history from our own curriculum, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't add up. And I don't know what we, we intend to actually I'm achieve. achieve because we need to understand where we're coming from before we get to where, we, you know, where we're going yeah. to. But most importantly, it's the fact that as leaders, as you know, political office holders, as those who are calling the shots and those who are governing the affairs of the people, we need to be very sensitive. We can't constantly just ignore the people and feel like, oh, we can move on. It's okay. Yeah. Government has done this and government has done that. Uh, like you true. say, a lot of people would not move on. A lot of people have not moved on. There's a lot of hurt and people are so hurt. A lot, there's a you lot know, of pain. There's a lot of pain going on. And we can constantly act like we don't, we don't know what these people are talking about. I, I still like to just stay with us. I mean, so it's like, that's what's going on, but let's relate it to what's happening in Nigeria. The people are saying that we have been marginalized. We're not carried along. And then we see in terms of, you know, occupying government offices, I mean, uh, handling positions and what have you, you get to see that there's no fairness, there's no equality. And all of this will constantly trigger all of this anger. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, this would also be um, a lesson to everyone and to Nigeria most importantly. Yeah, well, so, so that's why I try to, you know, spread, you know, you know the, the conversation across the whole country. The hurt that you're referring to and the hurt that I also spoke about, um, you know, it's not just in one, you, you gave an example, you know, but there are so many of these examples. I still, I think it was on my Instagram page uh, where I shared the, the video of a father who was crying just before the NSAS protest. It was, it was crying because he lost his son to, you know, police high-handedness. Uh, I think it was a SARS officer who shot his son. Um, that is pain right there. You don't expect him to simply just accept that, oh, well, the son is gone, so pack up and go home. Or government, you know, has arrested the police officer and that's it. That's not, that's not the answer to any of his tears. And I want you to multiply that man by 100,000 so you can have a picture of how many people, maybe a million, maybe five million people are very who are angry. hurting and very, very angry because of the lack of justice, you know, that has existed in Nigeria for a very, very long time, including the Lekki um, you know, killings, including uh, the Shiites, including the ones in Odi, in, in Zango Katav. There's so many of them that have, you know, this pain and this hurt. There's families who have lost loved ones um, to the most senseless killings ever. Ever. And what do you get from a government who doesn't even accept that it has failed the people to you fail to protect the lives and property of people? A government that you know blames farmers for not taking permission from police officers or from the security agency before going to the farm or fishermen. I don't remember what it was. These families still exist. Um, these persons still exist. You know their loved ones still exist somehow, some way. And that pain is not going to be wiped away simply by. Uh, government living power by election or by you know a statement by Femi Additional, there will continue to be that hurt and that pain for a very very long time, um, and um, 
if, if a government continues to refuse to take responsibility and you know to be accountable for its failures, um, there will always you know you know be these people who you know in ten years or in twenty years will read about their history, will read about how their grandparents were killed, you know, by bandits who the government continued to not declare terrorists and treat them as terrorist groups. Um, you know, they would read all these things, they would hear all these things, and that pain continues for centuries and for decades and for mm -hmm. generations. Um, and that's exactly what we're seeing here, you know, in England. But um, that's a totally different society. They have also committed the atrocities, the, 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 the British, in Africa, in India, and everywhere. You know, there's nowhere that they stepped in that they didn't commit these same atrocities. United States also has committed similar atrocities in the Middle East, in Syria, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, Germany. in many of these places. I mean, and all we will of them. continue to see people from these countries for, for generations continue to hurt um, um, and feel bad because nobody is listening to their pain. You know, they, the world really is only listening to what international media organizations are selling and telling them, you know, that somebody had weapons of mass destruction, that this country is filled with terrorists, forgetting that there's also very innocent um, families and, and human beings in those countries. So, so that's what it is, really. It therefore um, means that, uh, you know, like we always say, there's no way you want peace without justice. Without justice. Absolutely. People need to be punished. Absolutely. Now, to our next uh, top trending story, and of course, this is very, very closely related to, you know, the first one that we spoke about, the indigenous people of Biafra. Earlier, last, sometime last week, we had a, uh, spoken about a planned protest um, in Israel. Um, that protest still did take place yesterday at uh, Neset, that's what it's called, uh, the, uh, uh, close to the seat of power in Jerusalem. They still peacefully protested, armed heavily with their Biafran flags and the Israeli flags. You know, and I think I spoke about this yesterday, oh sorry, sometime last week, you know, about the relevance of uh, Israel in the IPOB conversation, which I've not also been able to fully figure out. Um, but that's where they've chosen. They call themselves Jews. They say that Igbos, you know, originally they, they, were they Jews. They have some also. Uh, they have one? They have some, you know, connection yes, with the with Jews. Yes, with the Jews, you know. So, and that's why they chose Israel. And if you remember, uh, years, a few years ago when Namdi uh, allegedly absconded from Nigeria um, after the army attacked his residence, uh, the first place that he was seen was in Israel also. Um, dressed, you know, like an Israeli and the like. So um, they did carry out their protest yesterday in um, Jerusalem. Um, and like I mentioned last week, I'm not sure exactly how effective this would be, if this would be able to convince the Nigerian government to actually release Namdi Kanu. Uh, some of the things, that, of course, that they were, you know, uh, saying during the protest were, you know, free Namdi Kanu, uh, no more Nigeria, give us Ambazonia, um, and, and, and the likes, you know. Um, uh, we want a referendum and some of all those things. Um, once again, I'm not sure how effective that will be for the Nigerian government and in the call for Namdi Kanu's release, but um, it did take place yesterday. It was peaceful and, you know, eventually did uh, come to an end. Mm. Let's see how things actually pan out, you know, for them. Like you have already mentioned, how effective is that uh, going to be or the protest? And the fact that the case is already in court, I mean, this is now an illegal issue whether or not there was a reason for it to be a legal issue. Well, all that the people are asking for is justice, fair hearing, he should be treated properly, and uh, what have you. So, yes, fingers are actually crossed. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it happens. Is that the Omarian virus? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, then we'll probably need to get, get going already. <laughs> so yes, the IPOB, of course, uh, did have their protests yesterday. Those are two top, top trending stories. Um, we'll take a short break um, so that Mercy can get uh, uh, some things off her chest. And then when we come back, we're going straight into uh, off the press where we have major stories making headlines across the country this morning. Stay with us.